your equipment. <clears throat> we shall begin. Um, last time I shared, we actually did, um, we kind of diverted from doing some things on the tabernacle. <clears throat> and we talked about the prodigal son. Anybody remember that? Okay. You remember we talked about it or you remember what I shared? <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Patty, stand and recite the whole class right now, verbatim. <laughs> and, I, and I know that you can. Okay, oh, I forgot to tell you, you like my shirt? It's superheroes gathered around Jesus. We got everybody, all the big ones. And Jesus is saying to them, and that's how I saved the world. We got Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, the Hulk, we got Thor, who else? And Jesus. And I got this from Deborah. Yes. Okay. Um, turn with me to Exodus 25. We're going to just read some verses has to do with the golden candlestick. We shared the, the class before last uh, on the candlestick, and it was sort of an introduction, and I'm sure that uh, Lindsay can remind me of the name of that class, that whatever we named it. But anyway, uh, I'm sure she has it all written down and organized and <coughs> can, can shoot out any information at any time. <coughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tends to be my problem too. <laughs> Exodus 25, and we're going to just look at verse, well, start at verse 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work. Anybody remember what we talked about on that? Good for y'all, good for y'all. Um, <clears throat> beaten work shall the candlestick be made. It, his, his shaft and his branches, his bolts, his knobs, his flowers shall be of the same, shall be of the same. What, what is the same? Beaten gold. It's going to be the giving of Christ crucified, the Son of God, the nature of God. Um, and six branches, six because it's called the seven-branch candlestick with the, the one in the middle. Six branches shall come out of the sides of it, Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in, in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick and in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds and their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same uh, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. These knops and their branches shall be of the same, and it keeps repeating of the same. All it shall be one. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. All it shall be one work. It's just one work, folks. It's not, whatever you're going through is just one work. You want, you're one with Jesus. And the things of the cross and the things of his life are one work, and that's the way it's meant to be. Not a bunch of separate Christians running around trying to be Christian in the earth, but rather to have Christ seen and formed and coming out of them so that it be all one work. Um, One beaten work of pure gold, verse 37, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold, of a talent of pure gold, shall you make it with these, with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown thee in the mount. Okay. <clears throat> um...
When we were discussing the altar, the brazen altar, and the laver, they were out here in the outer court. Here's the, in, in the picture I have on the board with the mic in my hand so everyone can hear. <laughs> the the uh, altar and the laver are in the outer court and the light that shines there is natural light. Okay. When you get into the holy place where you have the candlestick, you have the table of showbread, and you have the altar of incense, it is lighted by the seven branch candlestick. When you get into the holy of holies, you see this big cloud of glory up here and everything. It is lighted by what's termed the Shekinah glory. Okay. And the Shekinah glory represents the um, eternal God, but the candlestick represents Jesus' body. It represents the Son of Man in us. It represents Christ crucified within his body. And when you get in here, it speaks more strongly of uh, not just the work that was done, but it speaks more strongly of that being duplicated in us, in the body, okay? And so let me just read a little bit here. The Shekinah glory located in the Holy of Holies emanated light that represented the eternal God, but the candlestick represents the Son of Man within us, or Christ crucified within us. It was before or in front of the Lord, and we'll see scriptures shortly <clears throat> that, uh, that declare that, meaning that he beheld the candlestick. <clears throat> so you have the Lord on the mercy seat. Of course, there's a veil in front of it, but these items here are before the Lord. <clears throat> they are there for him, not just for us. Interesting. Interesting, because these things out here, particularly the altar, has a lot to do with us, but th these things are for him, not for us. They are meant for us to give to him. They are meant for him to receive his son out of vessels, and that's what these things are all called, vessels, out of vessels. <clears throat> um, Seven branches made up his body. And then, you, you know, you know this, but we'll turn there. Uh, over in the book of Revelation, you find this, uh, chapter 1. And I will tell you that um, <clears throat> the things that we've, we've talked about and will talk about in relationship to the tabernacle, folks, we are the tabernacle of God. We are the temple of God. Okay, we're the real one. That was a shadow. We're the real one. Okay, most Christians know nothing of the tabernacle or the temple. They know nothing of how the procedures go. They know nothing of the different aspects of this. And yet, this is the eternal thing as it is in heaven, so be in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. Uh, you ever heard Jesus tell us to pray that? You know, in earth as it is in heaven. That, Thy kingdom come, your rule, your order. How about your order come in earth, not on earth, in earth, as it is, the way that it is, the way that it's always been eternally, the way that it is in God, in heaven, in heavenly places, in God's reality. Okay, so. We study these things, you know, someone says, well, that's the Old Testament, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that when the, the first people got saved, um, the only Bible they had was the Old Testament. And Jesus said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures, for they are they which testify of me. He only, the New Testament hadn't been written yet. So there is this 
reality of Christ here that Jesus said, search this stuff. And Jesus basically is saying by doing that, make all things according to the order that you see it, that is in eternity, that is eternal, better said, that is uh, eternal in quality. Um, thy kingdom come. Thy rule, thy order come. Then your will will be done. Finally, in earth as it is in the heavenlies. <clears throat> okay, so um, Revelation 1, verse 11, starting with verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, okay, so, did y'all hear that? Did you hear what we read? Because that's important. He's saying, I am Alpha, I, I am A to Z, because that's the Greek alphabet. I am A to Z. I am, he said in here in this same chapter, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the beginning and the ending. Both of those different ways of saying it with different meanings. But he starts with that I am, I am the full course meal. I am the full reality. Okay. And then he says the first and the last. And what you see, so, so we read that and we go, oh, you mean of the book of Revelation? What we see of the book of Revelation? You know? Yeah, write it in a book and put scary beasts <laughs> and scare everybody. No, he says, I am the first, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm it. What you see right in a book. Now, what is this, what is this, what is this book called? Somebody tell me, what's the name of this book? Revelation. The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. Jude is holding tightly to Revelation. First two words, the Revelation. Next three words of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Okay, so it's not, a, it's not the book of revelations, plural. It is the revelation of Christ. Oh, man. Wow. That's, that ought to get our attention. So if Jesus was standing there in front of us and he said, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last, the beginning and the end, what you see right in the book, would you go, well, okay, well, tell me, what is it? Just, just, all you got to do is, is show it to me and I'll write it in the book and that'll be it. No, you need to see it. And I'm right here. <laughs> That's what, you know, hello, I am first, last, you know, and he's going, I'm, I, I'm hoping they'll get this. <laughs> yes. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, the first and the last, what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyr Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. All right. Now this is, this is significant in so many ways, and I've only got such a short time that I have barely read the scriptures. You do realize that, and then we're going to have to stop. But this is so significant because... He turned to hear the voice and he sees a candlestick or better said, not better, but more accurate, seven instead of one. 
And he's got a rebuke for most of these churches because I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. And you've divided all up. And you've come to different conclusions about this and that. And you don't know my mind. You know your mind. You know what you've seen, but not what you've seen of me. Because if you truly see me, it makes you one. Remember what we read earlier in, in Exodus. It's one work. It is, and it is. It is in him. As long as we're at Thyatira and Pergamos and different ones and have these divisions and all this and where our identities are based on the earth, then we don't see it. I mean, I would believe that's his conclusion, not my conclusion. We don't, we don't see it because he said, make sure you make it according to what was seen in the heavens because it is one work and it is one beaten work that was formed together by the cross. Formed together, put into the fire and melted and molded and brought into a certain image. We have here in the last book of the Bible, we have Jesus standing in the midst of it, and it's all separate. It's all around it. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one. You see it? It's written right there. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one. There's still one. There's still oneness. Did you know that? It's still there. It's always there because of him. He's the one, of course. But we're one with him. And when our oneness is understood in terms of him and not ourselves, then oneness is always there. But when our understanding is based on me or my church or my thoughts or my, my, me, 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 what am I? I'm a small, short-term entity that doesn't even fit in eternity yet. I just fit in time. You say, well, time's a long time. Not to him. And you don't even fit hardly just a smidge in that picture. But in him, all of that is wiped away in the sense of it is not. It is, he is and it is not. See? It is not. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means it doesn't exist in our existence. Does that make sense? But he's still in the midst. He's in the midst of it. And as you know, he's writing them letters. Anyway. <clears throat> And in the midst of seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head uh, and his hairs were white like wool and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like undefined brass. And if they burned in, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. <clears throat> um, and so uh, I taught the book of Revelation a long time ago, long time. I guess it was maybe one of the first early classes I taught before most of you were born. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I did draw a picture because I, that freaked me out. I mean, I remember, see, back in the, back in the 60s, they had real wild, hippie-looking pictures of the book of Revelation. And one of them had Jesus' hair, and it was like this afro that was way out, and his eyes were just like, blazing fire and all this kind of stuff and it was like dude is that what he looks like you know because you know I'm picturing this guy walking with sandals and you know robes and stuff like that and it's going wow and I just thought that's just weird you know and it just took me a long time to just agree with that until one day I had put it down and I made a little outline of a person I put it and I realized that's a picture of the tabernacle the brazen feet is the brazen altar, and there you go all the way through, and it has the, the basic pattern in the, the 
hair white as snow and the eyes is the Shekinah glory and the presence of God and you're just going, what? That is the, that's him. That's him. But that's not my main point right now. Um, verse 15, and his feet like undefined brass as if they were burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. <laughs> and his countenance, go wait for me in my office. <laughs> And his countenance was as the sun that shineth in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Okay, that's somebody catching sight of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> the tabernacle, when you start through this process, the first thing you hit is the altar. <laughs> You're dead. Now everything else, the word and the washing of the word and everything is going to be about him teaching until he starts being formed specifically until it's just literally him and you as one with him. Okay. So when you truly see him then, you fall at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me, fear not, I'm the first and the last. You know, well, my response, I remember when I read this back, back then, you know, I fell at his feet as dead, because I read all this like this was happening to me. I fell at his feet as dead, and he said, don't fear, I'm the first and the last. I'm going, well, that's good for you, but I'm down here dead, because I'm thinking separate. Get it? Because I'm thinking, you need to do something for me, because I'm still alive. See, I don't think that. I am that. I'm, I'm always putting myself into the equation when he took me out of the equation. And then he says, I am he that liveth. And you go, again? I'm down here dead. <laughs> and was dead, and behold, I live forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of, of hell and death. And he never does go, you know, don't worry, you're gonna, everything's going to be wonderful for you in the sense of the way we always think about it. Write the things which thou hast seen. Well, so far all I've seen is you and me dead. Is that okay to, to write that? <laughs> and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter, the things, write the things that are perpetual. Do you know the things that are perpetual in this tabernacle? One of them is the candlestick. It's never supposed to go out which speaks of perpetual giving that of yourself, of your oil, that light may be given to others. Perpetual. It's a spirit of consecrated, perpetual selflessness. And write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. And we go, Oh, this is talking about the end times. <laughs> He's going, no, I'm talking about what's perpetual. And it's not just the candlestick, by the way, that is perpetual. And then finally, I got time to read this last verse, and then it's actually time to quit. Verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in, the, in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Seven is the number of completion, so they represent the full body. But they, at this stage, represent a body that is splintered, earthbound, um, freaking out at life's circumstances, and have no clue what they have, where they are, and who they're joined to. All right, so I'll leave you with those happy words, and we'll take a little break and come back.